welcome to part 4 of thermal spray deposition technique where we will discuss about the scope of research and also how to plan for the research studies of different materials development by thermal spray deposition route. In this particular talk I will discuss about the research results on development of uh, two different types of coating one is thermal barrier coating and another one is typical bioactive coating for implant applications. So, initially I will discuss about the thermal barrier coating. So, as I mentioned you in the last uh, slide that uh, thermal barrier coating is usually applied um, on the turbine blades uh, and nozzles where you are looking for very high temperature oxidation resistance property and there you look for a thick ceramic layer on the surface of the uh, substrate which is nothing but uh, super alloys may be nickel based super alloys or cobalt based super alloys for the applications where for the different applications as you are looking for and uh, that coating is developed onto the surface of the uh, super alloy and uh, before that you apply a very thin bond coating uh, made of conicroly um, which offers a high temperature oxidation resistance property and that uh, oxide based ceramics offer that uh, thermal barrier property or acts as insulating barrier for reducing the effective operating temperature of the substrate. So, usually this coating is uh, this is known that this particular top, top coating is applied by uh, electron beam physical vapor deposition technique or by air plasma strain technique. But uh, each and every technique is having its own advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of air plasma strain technique over EBPVD is that air plasma strain technique is more flexible technique. By this particular technique, you can have all lateral cracks, and these lateral cracks act as a, acts as a kind of acts as the centers where stress can be re relaxed very nicely. So when the component is subjected to uh, like thermal stress that cyclic thermal stress then those stresses can be arrested very nicely on the typical um, plasma spread uh, defective part like lateral cracks whatever are present on the surface. Air plasma spray is quite cheap and easy to operate. You get thicker coating by air plasma spraying than EVPVD and it is tougher than that of electron beam physical vapor deposition technique. So, uh, you can for having the flexible composition on the coated layer for having different types of coating usually people choose the uh, plasma spray deposition technique prefer to have plasma spray deposition technique to electron beam physical vapor deposition technique. So, it is known that this technique uh, is applied for uh, TBC development. On the other hand if you talk about bond coat, bond coat may be developed by plasma spraying process, but uh, when you develop the bond coat by plasma spraying process there is chance of lot of porosity in porosities which are arrested in the bond coat. So, usually what you do is that you develop the bond coat by typical HVOF spraying technique. So, when you develop it by HVOF spray technique by you get very dense coating and that dense coating is capable of improving the uh, properties of the component to a large extent because it offers superior corrosion resistance and high temperature oxidation resistance property of the material. So, if you see that temperature uh, because the temperature profile uh, through the uh, coating because of the application of the coating you will find that or uh, maybe designing of the coating you will find that this is super alloy which is having the bond coat of the thickness 30 to 100 micron. Then uh, what of coat thickness is uh, 100 to 300 uh, 3000. Uh, micrometer uh, 100 to 3000 micrometer and then usually the TGO layer is having maximum thickness of 0.1 to 10 micron. This is nothing but oxidation product and the temperature increases at uh, from the surface temperature decreases and then it is minimum at the uh, bond coat and super alloy substrate. So, you will find that uh, this is the combinations and this is very quite established that people do use these techniques for this specific purpose. Now, if you are interested to develop newer kind of materials for these thermal barrier applications or newer uh, varieties of coatings having tailored properties, 
then you have to choose of you have to think of choosing superior materials. So, superior materials in this regard include lanthanide stabilized, uh, lanthanide stabilized zirconia or the composites of vitreous stabilized zirconia and lanthanide stabilized zirconia and also you can add different rare earth, rare earth element to a large extent in the bond coat and then prepare the bond coat of different completely different composition and then develop it by HVF spraying technique. So, those are the areas where lot of researchers are working and then uh, new and materials are developed for this particular purpose. So, in this particular research studies we what we do I will say briefly explain or share some of our uh, research experience on the development of thermal barrier coating. So, where uh, our uh, newer approach was to develop the greater coat, graded coating instead of the monolithic composite monolithic ceramic coating as the thermal barrier coating to have the higher toughness and also superior properties of the coating. So, where what we did is that we basically use the conicroly standard powder as the bond coat and uh, for top coat instead of having the ETS stabilized zirconia um, monolithic coating we used a combination of ETS stabilized zirconia and the uh, and conicroly in a graded fashion. So, that near to the bond coat the composition was 90 percent bond coat plus 10 percent top coat as you go ahead you will find that the composition of the bond coat percentage of bond coat decreases and at the surface it is 100 percent top coat. So, like that we designed the coating and try to see the effect on try to see its effect on oxidation resistance as well as overall service life of the component. So, as I mentioned you that in this particular say any process uh, of uh, thermal spray deposition your precursor uh, co coating precursor may be in the form of powder or maybe in the form of wear or maybe in the form of uh, rod, but when you talk about plasma spray deposition process then naturally the precursor uh, coating pre coating precursor should always be in the form of powder. So, particularly in those cases uh, for example, where we use that uh, it is stabilized zirconia as powder. So, when you develop the when you started developing the it is stabilized zirconia um, top coat by plasma state deposition technique. This it was stabilized zirconia gas atomized powder was used as precursor precursor powder, which contains mostly tetragonal zirconia, a few monoclinic zirconia is also observed, uh, monoclinic zirconia peaks uh, are also observed. On the other hand, bond coat was conicroly, so where we get only uh, gamma as well as a few beta peaks were also observed. So, this particular coating was developed by plasma spraying, this coating was developed by HVF spraying. So, the coating design was like that. So, this is a newer uh, approach which we followed. Basically, instead of having the monolithic coating, we had graded coating. So, where 100 percent conic trolley, 70 percent conic trolley plus 30, 50, 50, and we developed 4 layers. Each layer is having thickness of 80 micron. So, total and final layer thickness was 100 micron. So, bond coat thickness was around 80 micron and total top coat thickness was around uh, 240, uh, four, three, 340 micron, 340 to 350 micron. So, uh, and each layer was having the similar thickness. So, what we did is that uh, we just developed both the kind of coating in order to show the effect of the compositional gradation on the uh, microstructure composition and properties. So, the steps which you had followed or which is usually followed for this kind of experiment was that you have to procure powder, then you have to develop the coating, you have to characterize the coating, then evaluation of properties in terms of high temperature oxidation, wear erosion, hardness, Young's modulus, thermal conductivity, coefficient of thermal expansion these all properties were evaluated and finally, we tried to compare the properties of the both coating to large extent. So, if you see that uh, coating thermal barrier coating uh, microstructure uh, cross section you will find that this particular coating contains lot of porosities uh, as well as the cracks in the lateral dimension. So, those cracks are present because uh, 
those cracks as I mentioned you they are essential because they basically um, as they act as a kind of points of stress relaxation. So, whenever these lateral cracks are present naturally you will find that whatever thermal stresses are developed they get uh, relaxed uh, very nicely over the cracked points and uh, uh, because of the very high large stress actually there is uh, this change in monoclinic to uh, tetra tetragonal to monoclinic structure and by this structural transformation the uh, crack tip is also toughened. So, during the process itself you will find that ETS tabular zirconia gets toughened and uh, it offers the further improvement in the toughness. So, in the monolithic coating we had this particular ETS tabular zirconia layer and conic toli layer you will find there is not much porosities. Uh, because it has been developed by geostraying root and you get 100 percent dense coating. In the case where you use the graded coating there you find that uh, degree of porosities were a little bit lower than that of monolithic coating and uh, you will find that there are presence of both metallic as well as ceramic component and ceramic component content increases as you go on increasing from, uh, from the depth, from depth towards the surface because of the change in the composition. So, this is also visible in the extra diffraction profile. So, you will find that uh, that cross section uh, when the uh, microstructure this kind of coating is subjected to high temperature oxidation you will find that there is a very thin TGO formation at the interface and TGO thickness is quite low hmm. and that TGO thickness in fact increases with temperature as well as time of the uh, oxidation. So, usually you observe the um, or maybe you see the performance of the coating when you do high temperature oxidation study and usually performance of the coating in terms of the microstructural change if you would like to see you will find that on the surface of the uh, coating you will find no uh, signature of the oxidation because that is already oxide layer and also mentioned you that that the that particular ceramic layer or insulating layer or thermal barrier coating actually does not offer the high temperature oxidation resistance property. But high temperature oxidation resistance property is usually offered by the typical uh, bond coat which you are using for the top coat development because bond coat offers high temperature oxidation resistance and as a result of which whatever oxide scale forms that forms at the interface between the bond coat and top coat. So, you must study the interface very meticulously and measure the thickness of the TGO layer as a function of time and temperature to study the oxidation behavior of this kind of coated alloy. It is very much painstaking job because every time you have to measure the thickness of the oxide layer at the interface not at the surface. So, this interface looks like that. On the other hand, if you talk about the graded coating you will find that this TGO layer is not really forming on a single space, single zone, it is forming all throughout the surfaces wherever it faces the bond coat. So, TGO again is formed, uh, it is not really continuous layer, it forms at the interface, again it forms at the interface between coating and that of uh, bond coat and that of uh, ceramic layer interface. So, different, different layers you will get different TGOs formation. So, TGOs, these TGOs actually acts as a kind of again kind of barrier for the subsequent oxidation in case of graded coating as compared to that of monolithic coating. So, if you just measure the kinetics of oxidation for monolithic coating or duplex coating and that of graded coating, you will find that the kinetics of oxidation is much lower in case of uh, graded coating as compared to that of uh, duplex coating. Uh, for both the temperatures of oxidation like 900 degree as well as 1000 degree. So, you can understand that by the application of the uh, graded coating, uh, the oxidation resistance property could also be improved which was not earlier known. Because the main reason behind the improved oxidation resistance property is that there are a lot of interfaces which are generated because of uh, that inter because of the intermixing and spraying of the that ceramic metal mixed layer uh, instead of having only ceramic layer on the top. So, that interfaces uh, play very important role 
because it hinders the transportation of the oxidation or acts as a barrier of oxy barrier for the oxygen transport and as a result of which overall kinetics of oxidation increases when you have the typical uh, graded coating as compared to that of duplex coating. So, now if you just see the typical uh, activation energy for oxidation in case of duplex coating and graded coating you will find that it is in fact much higher than that of duplex coating. So, duplex coating it was earlier observed that or it was earlier documented that graded coating would be beneficial for improving the toughness of the coating, but we established that not only toughness, but also high temperature oxidation resistance also increases because of the development of the uh, graded coating in contrast to that of duplex coating. Now, when you found, found the mass distribution naturally you will find that in case of uh, duplex coating uh, that typical mass distributions are like only uh, at in 100 percent duplex coating it is uh, that uh, tetragonal zirconia. On the other hand uh, in case of uh, after oxidation we get tetragonal zirconia uh, gamma phase cobalt oxide alumina in the oxide scale actually. And, uh, Similarly, if you see that in the in case of graded coating again you will find that in different layer different phases are forming and uh, this phase distribution is very much dependent on the composition of the each layer. Hmm. So, uh, but you will find that uh, alumina is forming to a large extent in different layers which basically acts as a barrier to uh, high temperature oxidation property. Now, if uh, when we just measure the residual stress distribution in the different layer, we found that residual stress also changes to a large extent uh, in case of duplex, duplex as well as uh, graded coating. So, you will find that uh, in composition of graded coating, you will find that 100 percent YSJ residual stress is mostly uh, positive. On the other hand, as we go on increasing the metallic content of the coating residual stress content residual stress value just uh, changes from tensile to compressive. So, metallic uh, incorporation actually also uh, helps in reducing the residual stress level not only reducing the stress level, but also changing the stress value from tensile to compressive. So, this is very much important because residual stress when is compressive naturally it helps in and improving the resistance to thermal fatigue, thermal shock resistance. So, now we propose the mechanism of oxidation where we propose that the presence of uh, metal oxide at the uh, metal ceramic interface acts as a barrier for counter ionic transportation and by that process it basically there are also lot of spinel formation. So, uh, these particular spinel and different oxides help in uh, re increasing the uh, kinetic energy of the uh, oxidation and hence uh, the rate of oxidation decreases to a large extent. So, now uh, we can thus notable conclusions of that work was that the microstructure of the 100 percent YSJ coating consists of porosities and micro cracks which help in coating to be strain tolerant. However, the oxygen ingress is there which leads to oxidation of the bond coat. On the other hand, when you have the combination of conic rolly and YSJ, it reduces the uh, quantity of oxygen uh, transported towards the bond coat. Hmm. Kinetics of growth of TGO is parabolic in nature and activation energy of duplex and naturally because of the uh, gradation, we could have the higher kinetic energy of the um, oxidation. And post oxidation analysis showed lot of spinels which actually help in uh, reducing the kinetic reducing the kinetics of oxidation further or increases the activation energy of the oxidation and residual stress also is reduced to a large extent and changes from tensile to compressive because of the uh, gradation graded layer formation. And uh, we also found that uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion and E value increases with increasing the conic rolly content and uh, naturally it helps in reducing the stress level. So, like that we also tried to develop the etiocellular zirconia and uh, etiocellular zirconia and lanthana mixture and observe that this uh, composite coating 
uh, offer superior oxidation resistance property than that of the typical duplex coating. Then another example I will show you that is uh, coatings for bio implant application. So, this is a kind of bioactive coating this was applied on Ti64 substrate. So, Ti64 is a very interesting material for uh, bio implant application, but uh, problem with the Ti64 is that it is bio inert in nature as a result of which there is no spontaneous uh, integration on the surface of Ti64. And uh, though it is having lot of applications in different implants uh, for example, hip and knee joints, bone fixation plates, screws, dental implants, but because of its poor uh, bio or uh, that osseo integration property usually prior to that Ti64 applying as implant inside the human body people go for uh, typical uh, hydroxy appetite, hydroxyl appetite uh, coating on the surface by deep coating technique. But problem of the hydroxyl appetite coating by deep coating technique is that this particular coating is very much um, fragile in nature. So, its durability decreases to a large extent and hydroxyl appetite gets dissolved gradually and uh, naturally it, uh, it reduces the lifetime of the uh, component uh, particularly whenever it is a kind of fixed implant. So, if we develop the coating by a plasma spray deposition technique naturally the coating will be stronger because uh, it is having it is really adhering to the surface of the substrate. And not only that because the presence of lot of porosities on the surface you find that the there is a more cell adhesion on the surface because of the presence of rough surface. So, it has this possibilities of applications in hip and femoral surface or knee joint surface to a large extent. So, this is typical hydroxyl appetite coating uh, which is very much uh, bioactive in nature. So, usually it is applied on the implant uh, by dipping technique uh, as I mentioned you. So, um, that hydroxyl appetite is having that calcium to phosphorus phosphorus ratio 1.637 uh, which is the indication that hydroxyl appetite layer has uh, formed. It is having very good corrosion resistance, it is having very good fracture toughness, porosities are also present which helps in cell adherence and moreover this is bioactive in nature. So, in this work we tried to have the, but one of the biggest problem of hydroxyl appetite is that uh, though it is having good fracture toughness, but not adequate actually. So, it is quite lay, low as compared to that of human bone, particularly when you use it for uh, uh, that uh, dose purpose dynamic uh, implant applications, you should have good fracture toughness. So, there the hydroxyl appetite fails. So, we tried to have the increased toughness of the hydroxy appetite and also increased hardness of the hydroxy appetite by adding titanium dioxide as well as zirconia uh, with hydroxy appetite and subsequently develop the coating by plasma spray deposition. So, two different types of coatings were applied again the composition was earlier uh, attempted, but they did not mention the properties of the coating clearly. So, in one kind of coating we use hydroxy appetite plus 50 percent titania, another kind of coating we used uh, hydroxy appetite plus 10 percent zirconia as a coating precursor. And after this is applied after application of the coating by plasma spray deposition technique we try to see the microstructure phase where corrosion resistance as well as bioactivity. So, this is typical the parameters employed for the um, coating. So, this parameter was the kind of optimum parameter as I mentioned you whenever you talk about the any deposition technique it is very important that you say the or optimize the parameters properly. So, parameters which play a role in plasma spray deposition they are the primary gas flow rate then hydrogen gas flow rate then carrier gas flow rate voltage current stand of distance and the velocity of spraying. So, these are the different parameters which play a role in determining the quality of the coating. Hmm. So, we also did another treatment that is heat treatment after the coating. So, after the spraying we add the different heat treatment that heat treatment was aimed at uh, retention of the structure of the hydroxy appetite 
which after spraying it turns into amorphous, but when we give heat treatment it converts from amorphous to crystalline. And also another reason for heat treatment was to release the stress associated with the coating. So, if you see the coating carefully you will find that the interface is very strong, you will find there is no, uh, no porosities or no defects at the interface. Coating thickness uh, varied from 200 micron to 250 micron and uh, in both the cases even though you are using hydroxyapatite plus titania or hydroxyapatite plus zirconia, you would not really find uh, those uh, features of the uh, titania or zirconia in a separate way. So, they mixed properly and got uh, melted and subsequently sprayed over the surface of the substrate. You can say that uh, there is not much many interfaces present between the uh, coating as well as hydroxyapatite and zirconia or titania. So, if you see the structure of the surface you will find that uh, here uh, there is a tricalcium phosphate formation because of decomposition of hydroxyapatite and calcium titania deposition uh, deposition in case of uh, hydroxyapatite plus titania coating. Hmm. On the other hand in hydroxyapatite plus zirconia coating you will find that there is formation of um, very fine nano calcium tricalcium zirconate phase formation. So, these were actually uh, these were actually uh, evidenced by the transmission electron microscopic analysis. So, whenever you talk about coating you see the cross section properly. So, that uh, you can make sure that coating is adherent to the surface. You can see the microstructure of the cross section as well as microstructure of the top surface properly. So, that you make sure what are the phases present, how the microstructure is because microstructure and composition play a very important role in determining the uh, bioactivity as well as the corrosion behavior of the material. Hmm. So, that uh, hydroxyapatite plus titania coating you find that tricalcium uh, uh, that uh, in the hydroxyapatite plus zirconia coating you will find that there is formation of uh, calcium zirconate phase and in addition to that tricalcium phosphate phase. So, if you see the microstructure uh, different uh, characteristics of the coating you will find that in 50 percent uh, zirconia as spread condition there is formation of uh, uh, rough surface roughness increases. But when we did heat treatment of the coating, roughness decreases to a large extent. Heat treatment also helps in uh, improving the reducing the porosity percentage, and also phase composition was also changed because of the heat treatment. As I mentioned you that hydroxyapatite, when you do spraying, it is mostly in amorphous phase, but when you do heat treatment, then naturally the crystallinity increases. So, you get more percentage of hydroxyapatite in the coating. So, uh, this roughness is very important in increasing the cell adherence property and porosity is also equally important, but porosity content should not be too high because if it is too high it reduces the toughness to a large extent. So, you will find that uh, after heat treatment the how the properties uh, changes actually. So, um, this is very important because uh, if you just go on doing this is the case for titanium plus uh, hydroxyapatite plus zirconia coating, where uh, you observe that in the coating there are a lot of porosities and there is also calcium zirconate phase formation which is nano is in nature because uh, this phases is the uh, in situ formed uh, product. So, because of its in situ formation there are a lot of uh, very much nano structured uh, material on the surface which was again confirmed by transmission electron microscopic analysis. So, if you see the characteristics of the zirconia coating you will find that uh, again porosity and uh, that uh, roughness again changes because of heat treatment and in cal calcium carbonate in hydroxyapatite plus zirconia coating you find that the degree of uh, amorphousness actually decreases to a large extent by heat treatment process. So, this is very important because it is having uh, the final effect on the corrosion resistance property. So, when you measure the wear resistance we found that because of that uh, typical hydroxyapatite uh, plus zirconia uh, deposition we get uh, significant enhancement in the corrosion uh, wear resistance property. So, because of the hardness achieved in the 
coated layer. So, you will find that when we did only hydroxyapatite uh, coating, uh, there we found that uh, hydroxyapatite plus titania coating here, there we found that not much enhancement in the wear resistance was there. But when we did hydroxyapatite plus zirconia coating, after heat treatment we found that uh, that wear resistance increases. So, we could conclude that all coatings are not good for wear resistance applications or wear resistance enhancement. Similarly, we also found that whenever we did like uh, titania coating, titania plus hydroxyapatite coating and titania plus zirconia oxide coating, we found that uh, this, uh, this composite coating again not so good for improving the corrosion resistance property. But again you can understand that the titanium itself is having very good corrosion resistance. When you add hydroxyapatite naturally because of the dissolution the overall oxidation corrosion resistance property decreases. But again the corrosion resistance enhancement was not the main purpose of this study. Main purpose of the study was to, to have the good fractured highly fractured surface to fractured toughness coating coating with a very high fracture toughness and coating with uh, high, high level of bioactiveness. So, finally, we just summarize the different results. We found that uh, the hardness wise the coating with uh, 50 percent TiO2 and post heat treatment was having little higher hardness and but hardness enhancement was more when we added zirconia and Young's modulus was significantly reduced and 10 percent zirconia without heat treatment offered minimum your Young's modulus because for this bio implant application we do not need uh, very high Young's modulus. Uh, in fact, lower the Young's modulus better is it, closer is the uh, Young's modulus to that of human bone better is it. So, by this particular hydroxyapatite coating the Young's modulus was uh, around uh, 80 to 85 GPA, so which was reduced to 55 GPA and if you talk about corrosion rate again corrosion rate was reduced uh, to a large extent to not really to a large extent, but it was higher than that of it was much lower than that of only hydroxyapatite based coating and uh, pitting corrosion potential was also uh, not changed to a large extent. So, this kind of coating obviously uh, was not so beneficial in improving the corrosion resistance and wear resistance though under certain conditions of coating we had very good corrosion resistance as well as very good wear resistance property. But main purpose of the coating was that to increase the bioactivity and have the uh, superior fracture toughness. So, when we did the bioactivity study we found that bioactivity behavior was uh, reported or maybe we analyze the bioactivity behavior of this coating by knowing the percentage of the calcium phosphate deposited when dipped in Hank solution. So, we found that area fraction of appetite formation was increased by this coating because it is quite natural because you have hydroxy appetite in the coating hmm. and uh, that particular thing was continued and we finally, try to uh, optimize the heat treatment parameters and have that optimum composition to be that uh, 10 percent zirconia after heat treatment where wear resistance was enhanced as well as the bioactivity was also enhanced. But it is very much important that uh, even though it is improved, but still uh, we were uh, further studies are required to optimize it further. So, that we get very tough coating with the required properties as we desire. So, like that this is a kind of approach which can be followed for the development of the bioactive coating not only uh, on titanium, but other materials as well and for corrosion resistance, wear resistance uh, and also contact fatigue, fatigue uh, resistance enhancement for bio purpose and by different studies can be conducted to know the uh, behavior of the coating performance of the coating to a large extent. So, whenever you deposit any layer on the surface of any substrate for a specific application, it is very important that you do characterize it properly as well as uh, do testing in different environment to have the result and to know the performance of the coating in the given environment. So, this is a typical appl application of this uh, particularly bioactive coating in for example, 
hip uh, replacement, hip joint replacement, where you found that in the stem section, some part is subjected to uh, very much in contact with human blood. So, there the um, cell adherence rate should be maximum. So, there if you develop this kind of coating naturally, it will promote the cell growth and naturally the implant will succeed for a long time. So, finally, in summary we can say that in this particular four talks we discussed about the principle of thermal spray deposition technique, classifications and its scopes, then applications and finally, two examples of the application of the thermal uh, spray deposition technique for uh, invention of newer technology or maybe de development of newer kind of materials for different applications. Thank you very much.